Tonight we're talking about our love affair with cars and what it costs us. We've heard from passionate car lovers, but what about everyday drivers? Here's Lisa Main. Hey Dad, I've got chicken on mine. Breakfast time in Sydney's outer suburbs. Ben is a father of three getting the kids ready for school. He used to be a four-wheel drive owner, but rising petrol prices have encouraged him to downsize. Ben now drives Australia's most sold car, the Holden Commodore. It's an everyday car. I use it for work. Um, I do my shopping with it, take the kids to sport. I need the car every day. The main reason I bought a late model is because I need reliability. You know, yeah. if, if my car's off the road, uh, like I said, I've Life. got... I've got it service. I'm supposed to take it in for the service. Yeah. But because with school and work, and I even have trouble doing that. Ben lives in Glenmore Park, where public transport is limited. His car is critical to ensuring family life works. Living here in Glenmore Park, it's a bit, bit difficult because of transport. And I've got to get to work in Wetherill Park. There's no train stations, you know, I've got to get to Fairfield and then catch, try and get buses. I'd have to leave work at four o'clock in the morning. Every day, Ben drives his kids to school, as do most of the parents. Like, I think about the future for the children, you know, how it's going to be years to come. You know, you try and do your, you know, this all this uh, recycling and things like that, but uh, with cars, and until they fixed a few, something to replace petrol, you know, is, what is there much you can sort of do? Do you ever think about the fumes coming out of the car? Uh, well, most of the times you're driving with the windows closed anyway, so, um, and being so open, I, I don't think you have that much problem. You don't really take much notice of um, the fumes. Last year, New South Wales Health reported that air pollution contributed to up to 1,000 deaths. That's double the annual road toll. You know it's there, but there's not that much you can sort of do about it, you know. You know you need the vehicle, you know you need to go to work. Um, so I think you have to sort of take the good with the bad sometimes. Well, Ray, you were recently retired as a medical professor at Sydney University and you're also an activist over vehicle pollution. How big a threat is vehicle pollution to our health? Well, there's no doubt that uh, in Sydney alone, as we heard, there's upwards of uh, 1,000 to 1,400 persons who are uh, predicted to die each year in Sydney alone from exposure to the pollution. That's pollution in general, but how much do we know that the vehicles are responsible for pollution? Up to 65% of the pollution is generated by the uh, use of vehicles. Now, what's the problem? What, it, what is the, the actual problem in terms of the particles or the, the matter that's going out of these cars into the atmosphere? Well, the problem is that the combustion of fossil fuel, uh, particularly diesel, generates uh, toxic end products. Among them, you have noxious gases and you have particles. And the very fine particles can be inhaled and be carried all the way down to the gas exchange units where they dissolve and offload their cancer-causing cargo. But the fact of the matter is that our current national standards are not appropriate for health risk. Why not? What's wrong with them? Th well, the reason is that... For example, the particles uh, are measured by what is called a PM10, particulate matter 10 micrometres per cubic uh, metre, and those particles are measured by weight. And the experts have already declared time and time again that measuring by weight is inappropriate for health risk. It now should you, be. You've gone so far as to saying that these fine and ultrafine particles are the new asbestos. I have, what, yes. What's your evidence for that, what, to back up that claim? Well, the reason is that we know historically that when asbestos was found to be associated with mesothelioma, we had a debate 
where the invested interests were defending the use of... And are you saying laws. that's what's happening in this discussion? Absolutely. And w what are those vested interests? Who, who are the people you think are, are pushing back Well, as back Terry would have said in his book, uh, that it is the oil and car industries who are alleged to have uh, thwarted the introduction of appropriate standards. For example... Standards meaning what, though? Meaning filters on cars? Meaning what, what, what sorts of things? The national air quality standards are set for a purpose. And the purpose is not to reduce health risk. The purpose is to allow economic growth. Mm. Terry, what does it mean practically, though? What, what, what do you do to deal with these, these particles, this kind of pollution? Well, it, it is a very serious threat. I think the doctor has stated it exactly right. And in my book, I do lay out how auto and oil companies in this country have successfully lobbied, lied to regulators, uh, used their uh, litigious power to try and, and stymie regulation. In California, what we've done, because California has unique rights under our federal Clean Air Act, uh, we've gone ahead and regulated those very finest particulates, the, the 2.5 microns uh, uh, that uh, the doctor was talking about, 10. We've gone down to 2.5. The federal government has followed suit, and study after study has shown exactly what you talked about, that thousands and thousands of people are dying or dying prematurely as a result of this pollution in the air. And I, I just want to get clear what regulate means, though. Does regulate mean changing the petrol, or does it mean changing the car? It really means all of it because the car and the fuel work together as a system, obviously, and so we've reduced sulfur in the fuel, uh, just as you've done in Australia, which, which means uh, it will burn cleaner no matter what the engine is. But we've also regulated the engines and uh, put on things like catalytic converters and other filters. But does that work for the really fine, the ultra-fine particles? It definitely helps, but again, uh, the, the car companies have uh, pushed back on those types of regulations, uh, as have the oil companies, uh, in this country at least, and, uh, and that's slowed the adoption of them nationally uh, and even in, uh, in parts of California. Mm.